One minute, 40 seconds. Oh! I think that there it is. There you go. There it is. Oh, that's about it. I mean, what is the most appealing thing in the fighting industry? Knockouts. Why you might ask? Because it looks vicious. It's a brutal clash of two monsters whose skills can be qualified as a cold weapon in real life. And what's more exciting for us is to watch how huge guys rush at each other at full speed to rip each other's head off. But in this video, we will overview the cases when physique and jack build doesn't mean anything at all. Shout out to Tai Tuivasa and other guys. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with forwards and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. Number 10. Andy Ruiz vs Anthony Joshua The first fight of today comes from the boxing industry that shocked the world in 2019. In June, there was a fundamental fight for the heavyweight division. The American destroyer, who with all due respect doesn't live up to his nickname, having a record of 32-1, and was about to challenge the Olympic champion from Britain who was holding the WBA, IBF, WBO and IBO titles. And by the way, prior to facing the contender, he was undefeated with 22 consecutive victories. If we did an overview of this fight based purely on fighters' physiques, we would have picked Joshua, no doubt about it. Compared to Ruiz, the Brit looked like a rock that just left the gym that's been training for the last couple of years. Diced Anthony, who superseded his opponent in every department, was supposed to handle Ruiz with incredible ease. But as we will see further, things turned out exactly the opposite. The end of the fight came in the seventh round. Already in the very beginning, the destroyer caught Joshua's chin a few times, exploded again, and knocked him another time. Right back to Joshua, and Joshua in trouble, losing his footing. He's down again. After the referee finished counting, the fight resumed, but only for the American to wobble his opponent once again and make him take a knee. Finally landing a big blow, and now another. Surprisingly, it was the end of the fight, and Andy Ruiz became the new heavyweight champion of the world. Number 9. Roy Nelson vs. Mirko Krokop The next clash of today happened on October the 29th of 2011. Back then, Roy Nelson, the winner of the 10th season of Tough Show, and officially the fighter with the worst physique according to Dana White, was looking to share the octagon with the legend of the sport from Croatia. In comparison to big country, Mirko Krokop looked like a terminator with a distinct muscle mass and abs which he could use to knock someone out if he wanted to. But not everything in this world comes down to muscles, especially when we talk about mixed martial arts. A farmer's protege from Tucker and Dale vs Evil is about to prove it. When the fight reached the third round, Nelson went for the victory in the literal sense of this word. He made the Croatian shoot for the legs and used his weight as an advantage. How you might ask? Very easily, he sat on top of him and finished him via TKO until the referee stepped in. Oh, that's a big beat right hand. Here. Okay, stop, stop, that's it. it is that's all it. over. Big wow. country, Roy Nelson defeats Mirko Kroka. It was one of many myths that the American had to debunk by his own example. Number eight, Eric Esch versus Doug Norris. So the younger generation doesn't confuse who Eric Esch is, we will mention his nickname that was louder and clear in the 90s in the entire America. Butterbean, the legend of martial arts who in his time was very popular with the fans of fighting. When he was making his first steps on the boxing scene, one of the opponents happened to be his countryman, Doug Norris. You have to agree, looking at this guy, one would think that he should promote Old Spice instead of Terry Crews. But that was the beauty of those scraps. At a first glance, absolutely nonsensical and unfair in terms of chances to win. Despite the fans' opinions and comments from famous experts, things started to fall apart for Norris already in the second round, in which his suffering came to an end. Butterbean stood out among his opponents not only due to his conditioning, but also incredible endurance that allowed him to rush forward with a chin up in the air. 
After a minute into the round, the guys brawled in the center of the ring like madmen to find out who was more durable and who would be unlucky to go face first on the mat. It happened to be Doug Norris who ate a couple of stunning bombs with his face and expectedly teleported to the Shadow Realm. Amazing spectacle! But that was the problem. Well, it's wild now, folks, and there goes Doug Norris! Number 7. Bob Sapp vs. Uri Galei The next fight of today is sort of a spoiler for the new Kung Fu Panda movie, as the fighter from China with the same nickname completely destroyed Tai Lung's double in July of 2016. Bob Sapp doesn't need introduction because every fan of mixed martial arts know his name. As we said, in the summer of 2016, the beast went for another paycheck, performing in front of the Chinese crowd at Xiaomi Road FC32. Let's say it straight up. The action in the cage between these huge guys was shaking every wall up in the entire west coast. But these are the details, not related to the actual fight. Just like the fact that Herb Dean, who was officiating this mess of a fight, was jumping all over the place watching fighters move around the octagon. Overall, the spectacle in front of a cheering crowd lasted for one and a half minutes, during which Kung Fu Panda added his name to the list of fighters who managed to whoop Bob Sapp in one-sided fashion. We won't forget to mention that such fights are the reason we have a concept of a leap year which was provoked by the rumble in different parts of the planet, making it spin way faster around the sun. Number 6. Drazan Janjanin vs Kevin Walter In June of 2023, the internet witnessed the clash of two irreconcilable elements, boxing and blogger bodybuilding. What do we mean by that? A professional boxer from Bosnia and Herzegovina who wasn't having the best time on the professional scene, was given an ever self-searching internet personality whose appearance hinted at him having a lot of free time. Shortly speaking, in an attempt to make money with a big headline and a corresponding image, Kevin Walter was thrown under the bus of Drazan, who with all of his unathletic appearance still possessed the needed skills and had a good punch. And that's exactly what he showed his jacked vis-a-vis -vis in just a half a minute from the start of the fight. A precise shot with the right hand dragged the German from sky down to earth, literally and figuratively. It was an enlightening lesson for the guy who figured out firsthand that sometimes appearances doesn't mean anything and muscles don't play that big of a role when it comes to a real scrap. We move on. Number 5. Ismail Lazar vs Gideon Ogabar the next case of a complete deception looking at the fighter's physique and the opposite outcome that he showed in the ring took place in kickboxing. One of the main fighters who are in charge of debunking these kinds of myths is Ismail Lazar, the Moroccan of Dutch descent who finishes his opponents faster than Paulo Costa who calls himself an active fighter. He shared the ring with the Nigerian Gideon Ogaba in December of 2016. A quick high kick from Lazar immediately set the direction and pace of the fight. In this universe, where apparently the laws of gravity work a bit differently, the Moroccan dodged his opponent's attack with the speed of light and cracked his chin himself, sending him down. From that moment on, it was a matter of seconds. The Nigerian, being severely stunned, couldn't see anything but flashes and a huge silhouette in the form of an attacking Lazar who in turn, as it seems to us, was in a hurry for a second dinner which made him speed up even more. Another shot didn't take too long, and this time it was more than enough to beat the rest of consciousness out of Gideon's head on top of some brain cells. Like light, like light. Tai Tuivasa's double delivered another masterpiece. Number 4. Chris Barnett vs Travis Wiouf in August of 2014, the Asian crowd that have been very keen on the clashes of titans for a very long time got a new favorite, Chris Barnett. This short guy, beast boy, huggy bear, there were many other epithets to describe such an unusual appearance for a fighter, had another fight at Enoki Genome Fight 2. It was an early stage of the American's career before he began competing in the world's best league. At that moment, he was making a name for himself putting on such shows for the fans in the United States and Japan. This time, the role of an athletically superior fighter was given to Travis Wiouf, and that's all you need to know about him. 
we won't forget to mention the fact that before the fight against this guy, Chris Barnett just recently conquered the local championship of Ireland fights. And even if it doesn't tell you anything, it meant a lot for the region where the Huggy Bear fought. The fight with Travis Weouf managed to last more than one round, but it didn't affect the outcome in the slightest. Already at the very beginning of the round, a big guy rushed at Barnett headfirst only to lose it from a counter-attack. The fan favourite barraged his opponent with infinite strikes from the top position and earned himself another TKO win. No comments. Number 3. Mike Rosso vs Todd Duffy Perhaps not any of you remember such a fighter as Mike Rosso because of his lack of media presence and unassuming appearance. However, in his time this guy had some good moments inside the main MMA promotion. After wandering around local tournaments including Pride where he got his first and for a long time only loss, the American prospect amassed a record of 11 wins and one defeat. After another victory in his UFC debut, Russo got an opponent in the face of a rising bull who was about to become the new star in the promotion. Todd Duffy arrived in the organization at the same event as Mike, earning a sensational victory by a 7 second knockout. According to the promotion's plan, this Mr. Olympia participant was supposed to score a couple more of such finishes and then break into the title picture. Overall, at first, he was really close to pulling that off. Russo was really struggling in the beginning rounds. A fast, powerful and athletic prospect was beating him up with everything he had, putting more and more power in every strike. Duffy was properly battering Mike's head, testing his toughness and ability to take a shot. But in the end, he got into his own trap. In the third round, Todd felt like the walls were closing in. Contrary to Russo, he completely exhausted himself, dreaming more of an oxygen tank than a victory and a star status. As a result, in the middle of the round, Duffy ate a huge shot and got sensationally knocked out. Number 2 Ben Rothwell vs Alistair Overeem The closer we get to the finale, the more we talk about the stars of the UFC heavyweight division of the past generation. By September of 2014, the world's best league put on a rather exciting matchup. An American Big Ben was supposed to clash with a Dutch horse meat lover at another fight night event. Rothwell, looking clumsy and awkward on the outside, just recently came back from a 9 month suspension for using illegal substances. Overeem faced the same fate a bit earlier and after he finished his own suspension, he lost some of his horsepower. Despite the talks and big statements that Alistair would wipe the floor with the American, things turned out to be quite the opposite. Though many people said that Big Ben did not belong in the UFC, they could hardly imagine that his prominent beer belly would deflect the attacks of Overeem and protect him from the piercing knees like a bulletproof vest. A so-called style of freezing in one place and looking for an opportunity to land worked perfectly against the centaur without his hooves. Rothwell caught Alistair's chin after around two minutes and smashed his head into the canvas until the referee stepped in. Nice left hand, but down goes over him. Oh, this one's gonna end. Ben Rothwell has done it. A massive underdog. Number 1. Mark Hunt vs Czech Congo And as a first place we have a fight that in its time saved the career of Mark Hunt and convinced the entire fighting community that Super Samoan was still capable of competing against a top opposition. By February of 2012, the New Zealander more or less returned to the winning path after a long streak of losses. The UFC did not recognize his potential, seeing him as a washed veteran with a name who at best can only be a stepping stone for a younger generation. At UFC 144, matchmakers gave Hunt a French knockout artist, Czech Congo, who resembled a Hercules at the weigh-ins prior to the tournament. Let's put it like this, while at the weigh-ins people witnessed a true definition of difference in physical condition, in the actual fight, good old Mark showed the difference in knockout power. 
It was the performance that convinced the community that Hunt can compete at a high level, as Czech, despite all of his magnificence, looked like a harmless punching bag compared to his opponent. Super Samoan reached his chin in just two minutes from the start of the fight and sent him into the Shadow Realm. What are your thoughts on the issue of physical condition in the martial arts industry? Leave your opinion in the comments below. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the upcoming videos and of course hit the like button if you enjoyed this one. See you soon.